Hey everybody, it's Mark with SEO Freak. Welcome to part two of the Ultimate Google Search Console tutorial. In this video, we're gonna cover the performance tab and how to analyze your website's content performance in Google Search and Discover. But first, let's go over Search Console insights real quick. Google Search Console is a free, powerful SEO tool and the best way to understand how your website is being shown to users in Google Search. And while Google's ranking algorithms are secretive, we can tell by the way they present data what the most important metrics and therefore ranking factors might be. In the last video, we covered the basics of Search Console and its menu items. Now, at the top of the page, you can click Search Console Insights, which is a curated list of information regarding your website's performance over the last 28 days. You'll have to have the Google Analytics integration set up in order to see many of these insights because Google is looking at user engagement metrics like number of users, page views, and page view duration. If you don't have this set up, just go back to the first video in this series and follow along to get your data flowing. The amount of time people spend on your site is a massive competitive ranking signal for organic search. Building backlinks and making sure your technical SEO is fire won't make a difference if people are only spending 10 seconds on your site. So when you connect Google Analytics to Search Console, you're providing Google direct data on how users interact with your content, which can help you rank faster for more competitive keywords. All right, so let's dig into the data. Using Search Console Insights, you can identify what your top performing content is and what keywords are trending. This is great to see a high level view of what's doing well, and then to guide your overall content strategy. Further down the page, you'll see your latest content and then your most popular content. And if you click on a specific page, you'll be able to see a breakdown of how people find your traffic, like organic search, paid ads, or social, the most searched queries for that web page, referring links from other websites, and how visitors get to your page on social media. Take note of all these things because taking them into account is gonna be your best strategy for producing kick-ass content. And yes, you need to be distributing your content on social media. Google has a patent for social media data mining, showing that you're a legit business by posting on multiple platforms is an authoritative ranking factor. I use Search Console Insights to get a feel for what my best performing and trending content is. This can give you insights as to the type of content your audience best likes, what they're engaging with, or sharing the most on social media. Then all you have to do is make more of this type of content. Now we're gonna get into where I spend the bulk of my time in Search Console, the Performance tab. Most of your clicks will be coming from Search, so we'll start there. Google Discover is good to optimize for because I've seen up to 10% or more of a traffic boost once pages hit there. Um, it can be hit or miss though, and I'll go over that later. When you click on search results, you get this tasty chart. You can click on each metric to select or deselect it. In this example, I've got them all selected to show you the chart, but it's typically too busy for me to analyze altogether. Let's break down the metrics of the main chart. You'll see combined clicks, impressions, click-through rate, and average position for all searches. Total clicks is the total number of user clicks from Google search results. This shows you how many people actually clicked on a search result but not necessarily how many users were on your website. Total impressions is the number of searches your website appeared in. However, this data is for positions one through 100 only. Average click-through rate is the number of clicks divided by the number of total impressions. This isn't very useful in the aggregate, but as you click down to specific search queries or pages, it becomes helpful. Average position is the average ranking position in search for all queries. Again, it's not very useful in the aggregate, but as you start to examine specific queries or groups of queries, it becomes more helpful. It's most helpful for me to look at impressions and clicks over three, six, and 12 month periods. This gives me an idea of the general trends of my search performance and any seasonality. It's also great for reporting to clients if you're producing content every month. This site has a seasonal boost around November, December, and then things tend to drop back down in the first quarter. So still looking pretty good. Now let's talk about how to filter this data for some unique insights. At the top of the chart, there are a series of filters. Search type, you can select web, image, video, or news. This shows you how your website appears in organic search results in the images tab, the videos tab, or the news tab, all in Google's search engine. You can select any date range up to the last 16 months. 
Custom filters is where you can play with the data set a little bit. You can filter by search query, either searches that contain your target keyword, searches that exclude your target keyword, which is great for removing branded search, or your exact query. Or you can get nerd level and set a custom filter via regular expression. For example, you might filter searches by intent, so including a regex for what, how, when, why could be helpful here. Page, you can examine a particular web page's search performance. Country, you can filter by country, and device, filter by desktop, tablet, or mobile search. Most of these options have the same filter choices, either include, exclude, or use a regex to create your own custom filter. I find the page filter and the query filter the most important. I'll show you what I mean. In this chart, I have filtered for queries that contain my main target keyword. That way I can see all of the related keywords I'm ranking for and my average position for this keyword group. I can even identify out of the 14 keywords listed, which ones might be best to use for my headings or sprinkle throughout my article even more. Now here's the interesting bit. I targeted this keyword because you can see on the first half of the graph, I had an existing ranking for it averaging between positions 20 through 80. It's a subtopic of my main article. So, for example, if my main article was about a workout plan to get you in your best shape ever, this article is all about squats or deadlift or whatever. I published the article on June 12th. Now, I knew it was gonna rank, and you can see over the next two months, my impressions and traffic grew. And you can see over the last three months, I've ranked on average in position 1.7. Now, you gotta keep in mind that this is for multiple queries with my main target keyword. Anyway, using this technique, you can go through your main traffic pages and identify keywords you may be ranking for in lower positions and either optimize the existing article for them or create a new article to target them. Below the chart, you'll see this table with queries, pages, countries, devices, search appearance, and dates. This chart is super helpful and you can click on any query or page and it will show you the same line chart, but for that particular search query or page. One of my favorite ways to use this chart is to sort by impressions. So we see which search terms are getting the most impressions and then see which ones aren't currently ranking in the top five results. These are probably the most valuable keywords in your niche if you have decent search traffic already. If you're a new site, it can be a bit more difficult to find that data. Then you can further refine your results by clicking the filter menu at the top right of the table. So a favorite way that I like to use this is Click on position to select keywords that are ranking on average in specific positions. Now we're looking to get most of our keywords in the top five results. So keywords in positions five through 20 represent a solid opportunity for some quick wins. For this site, I'm gonna filter by keywords greater than position five and then sort by impressions. Here I can see some keywords which I might be ranking for already that represent opportunities to optimize existing content or write new content. Now click on pages and then click on one of your top performing pages. Here you can sort by clicks or impressions. It's useful to see whether you're getting the top five rankings for top impressions, right? Here you can see a page that is pretty well optimized. We're in the top five spots for the queries with the most impressions and getting a sizable number of clicks from it. If you see a big discrepancy here, it's worth noting which keywords aren't getting the top ranking, but have a lot of search impressions and then optimize for those. I do prefer to export this data into Google Sheets, which is directly integrated into Google Search Console. That way I can color code positions and keyword targeting. Now this option is at the top right of the screen. Just click export and move all your data into Google Sheets. From there, it's easy enough to sort your results by average position and then highlight and group target keywords for content optimization. When exporting to Google Sheets, I prefer to use the last three months worth of data. If I were to draw it out, I might see an average position of eight through 11 and then use that as a target keyword when in the last three months, I've got a top three ranking and that would be a horrendous waste of my time. Anyway, once you get your data into Google Sheets, we've got to clean it up a little. You're gonna get seven different sheets with data on them, but I'm most interested in the first two, queries and pages. I like to do some formatting then to make the sheet more manageable. First, I bold the top row, then right click to bring up the following menu. Under view more row actions, select freeze up to row one. This makes it so that when you scroll through the spreadsheet, your headings stay at the top of the page. Then select the impressions column and the formatting menu, select conditional formatting. Then I select color scale and put in the following format rules. 
For the minimum number, I select a light red. Then for my midpoint value, I select 500 and use a light yellow. For 1000 and above, I use the color green. Now, this means my search terms are gonna be highlighted by the number of impressions, meaning keywords that have a high probability of greater search volume. Next, I select my position column, then click the data menu and select create a filter. Then you can click on the filter icon in the column header, select filter by condition, and then greater than or equal to five. So this is what my spreadsheet looks like now. I'm only seeing the search queries lower than position five, and the number of impressions is color coded to show me targetable keywords. From here, it's a simple matter of moving these into a secondary spreadsheet, grouping them into topic clusters, and then using that data to inform my keyword research. Using this tactic alone is a great start to keyword research for SEO. I typically use hrefs in conjunction with Search Console, but since this tutorial is all about Search Console, I'm just gonna stop there. I'll give you my entire keyword ranking strategy in another video. Now let's analyze Google Image Search with Search Console. You can use the exact same strategy, but filter for images, video, and Google News. Using the filter at the top of the performance chart, let's select image. Now the chart will show me what search queries and pages have images that are ranking for those terms. You can use the data like this to update your image metadata like your image alt tags. It's also helpful to update the text around an image, especially the image description with some target keywords. Again, sort by impressions to see which search terms get more search volume and optimize for those keywords. Now we can analyze video search results. Repeat the same process as above, but for video. This will show you which pages your website has embedded videos on that you currently rank for. And with the keywords, again, sorted by impressions, this can give you a good understanding of where you could optimize your video title, the text around your video, like a description, and on a completely different level, which keywords to use in your YouTube title, description, and tags. Now, for more information on video SEO, I've got an article outlining a complete YouTube SEO strategy that will help you rank your videos and your website. You can check that out on this channel. I mean, I've got the video right here. All right, let's click on the Discover tab. Here, you're gonna see your website content that is being pushed to users on Google Discover. According to Google, this is the homepage of the iOS and Android Google app, as well as the mobile homepage of google.com in the browser. The best practices to optimize your content for Google Discover currently are short clickable headlines that aren't clickbait, use large images with keyword optimized alt text that matches your main target keyword, and use embedded videos, again optimized for the target keywords. In my experience, pages with embedded videos are more likely to get featured than static pages, and my highest performing content tends to get recommended. This website, for example, only has three pages that are currently being delivered in Google Discover, but even that is worth a 4% increase in traffic. If you're optimizing your content like I show you, you're more likely to be featured in Google Discover, but the traffic can come or go. Last year, for example, the helpful content update impacted Google Discover. I lost all my rankings there, but they came back when Google fixed the issue. Uh, Google giveth, Google taketh away. So that's how I use Search Console to analyze my keyword performance and optimize my articles or get ideas for new articles and videos. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go over the page indexing report, some technical SEO, and using the URL inspect tool. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in learning more about SEO and how to grow your business online, please consider subscribing to this channel and check out seofreak.com for more. I'll see you guys in the next video.